Hi there, welcome to a quick video tutorial on calculating measures of central tendency in Excel. This is something you're going to have to do for part 5 of your project where you've got a, uh, two frequency tables, one for each variable. I'm just going to quickly walk you through how to uh, calculate mean, median mode, uh, and standard deviation for your uh, individual variables. Okay, so what I've done is just created a, uh, a fake set of data. I've got hours of video games in a day. Uh, versus frequency. So you should have already come up with these on your own for your variables. You'll have two of these. Uh, so I've just plotted or I've put my, my data into a table here. Uh, so what I want to do is come up with uh, the average so, or, or the mean, the median, and the mode. So I've already done that here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just kind of walk you through how to do, how to go about uh, that process. So maybe the first thing I'll do is show you how to make a chart uh, just in the event that you don't know how to do that. Uh, if you just highlight your table, go up to Charts, uh, Scatter, and go to Marked Scatter, uh, Excel will generate a graph for you. Uh, you're obviously going to change the labels and the title, uh, but behind this blue box I've already done that, so I'll just show you the finished product. Uh, you can see I've got a nice little normal distribution here. Yours may not look like this, that's okay. You're not being judged on, or marked on uh, how well your, your relationship resembles a normal distribution, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so let's dig into calculating the average. So if you think about what we have here in this table, I've got a couple different data values, but my frequency column tells me the number of data values I have. So if you think about this, I have zero zeros, I've got two ones, I've got four 1.5s and so on. So it's not enough for me to just add up this column and divide by the number of data values. I actually have to take into consideration the fact that I have several of these data values. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm making another column in Excel this this column just says I'm going to take the frequency and multiply by the data value, and I'm going to do that for each one. So you can see here this is this is two times one, uh, four times one point five, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so what I've done is I'm essentially tallying up the number of one point fives. So if I have four one point fives, I got I have six. So if I add all of these together, that should give me the the total of all of my data values added added together. Okay, and I'm going to divide by the total number of responses, which would just be my frequencies added up. Okay, and I've done that in Excel by typing sum, open some brackets, and I just highlight that, that range of data. So that tells me I've got 33 responses. So to calculate my average, what I need to do is I need to add up this new column and divide by the number of responses. Okay, so you can copy this formula here. I'm, I'm moving quickly because I want to make this a brief video, but feel free to pause this video at, at any time. Uh, if you need to copy this formula down. Okay, so in, in, the, pro, in the bar up here, you're just going to type, e, type equals sum. You're going to highlight this new column and divide by whatever value you get when you add up your frequency. Okay, and that will tell you the average um, for your variable. Okay, so mine ends up being 3.09. Okay, the median, this one requires a little bit more work. Uh, again, it has to do with the fact that we've got this frequency situation, right? It's not enough just to find the middle of, of this column. Uh, remember, I've got a couple ones, a couple 1.5s, right? So that's going to definitely affect my mean in a similar way that it affected my median. So the easiest way to do this in Excel is to take all of your data values and make a new list. And I'm going to show you what that's going to look like. Sorry, it's kind of all over the place. So what I've done is I've taken my hours and I've listed them in order, including the frequency. So you can see I've got two ones. So I've, I've got one and a one here. I've got four 1.5, so I've listed four 1.5s, six twos, and so on. And you can see I've, I've gone for a while to get my entire uh, data table, okay? So what I've essentially done is ordered my data set in order from, from lowest to smallest. Uh, and then for my median calculation, in a, in a bar, I'm gonna type equals median, and I'm gonna highlight the range of, of my data set. Okay, you can see I'm actually not the entire, don't have the entire data set. Uh, so once I, once I do that calculation, you see that my median is three. Okay, and that's all you have to do for your median. The mode, the easiest way to do this is just to look at your highest frequency. Remember frequency means the number of times it occurs. By definition, mode is the data value that occurs the most. So in my data set, three hours of video games a day seems to occur the most, therefore that's your mode. Okay. Uh, so for your standard deviation, you're going to type this formula here. Uh, this this calculation, this P refers to the population. Uh, I don't really think that it makes a difference if you use population or sample. Maybe I'll just quickly. Okay, so it does make a slight difference. 
Uh, you could argue either way. I think maybe for your, your project, it, it would be best to use S for sample. Uh, so it's really only 0.1, um, like a tenth off. It's not the end of the world, but I would argue that you should probably be using sample for your project. Uh, so you're going to type that formula, you're going to open a set of brackets, and you're going to highlight that same list. So this is your list of data from up in your, in your frequency chart. It's just expanded to accommodate the fact that you have several data values. Okay, so once you type in that formula, you push equals, that'll give you your standard deviation. Okay, those are, those are three of the uh, four or five that you have to calculate. Uh, there's also, you're also being asked to calculate the interquartile range. I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, this, that should, that should be fairly straightforward. We've done several examples of that in class. Uh, but I'm hoping this video tutorial helps you uh, do some calculations. Save yourself a little bit of time. Don't do all of these by hand. If you want to do them by hand, that's fine. Uh, but really, that, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Uh, I hope that this video helped. If you have any questions about... Uh, any of these calculations, feel free to ask me in class. We still have a couple days before the next checkpoint. Uh, and, and if you're falling behind, uh, I'm really hoping that this helps you catch up.